Hi, and welcome to Reading Graphs and Charts Part 2. Again, this is a proficiency frequently asked question. So I'm not just going to go over what I've gone over in class before, but I'm going to go over some a little bit more in depth, hopefully, and hopefully it helps you better understand how to read a graph. First one, straightforward. Use the graph to answer the following question. How many players on the team have a batting average between 0 .300 and 399? So all you do is come over here and look for 0 .300 and 0 .39 and draw a line down and your answer is 5. Straightforward. Okay. For this question, we're going to use the graph to answer the following question. Based on the trend shown above, at what temperature will the water temperature reach 16 degrees? 16 degrees is not on our thing, so it's approximately here. And it would be over, obviously not quite on our thing. What you do notice is that for every, hmm, if you look, okay, from four to six is approximately one second, but from to go from six to eight takes a little bit longer. And if you go from eight to 10, we're going a little bit over a second here, so our answer is not going to be five seconds, but it's going to be six. Okay. Question. Use the data to answer the following question. Which of the following graphs would best represent this data? Correct answer here. Anytime you have height and then the height of the bounce, these are um, independent and dependent variables. The best way to represent these is with a line graph, so you'll truly see the relationship. You'll see that Okay, if I drop it at five, I'm at four, and you'll start seeing that, oh, wait a minute, it increases as I increase the height. You'd see this really well with a line graph. Okay, next question. Most individuals of a certain species of bird have medium-length tails, but tail length ranges within the species from sh very short to very long. If a new predator arrived that prepared birds with medium-length tails, which graph would describe the most likely result? When we look at the graphs, A doesn't make any sense because it's saying, okay, first they start eating them, then tail length. It's almost like you're graphing the two things, and this would be the short, and this would be the medium, and this would be long, and that's not what you would do. It wouldn't be flat because we would eventually see some kind of decrease in the birds because we have a new predator. So when you look at the graphs, really and truthfully, your best answer is C because you're going to see a decline in the number of birds because this is a new predator. Okay. When we look at this graph, we're looking to see what the response of paramecium menuglenate is to light. And we're looking at photosynthesis, because if they respond to light, they're photosynthetic organisms. So when we look at the paramecium, it doesn't respond to light. It actually decreases its response over time. So that means both organisms are not photosynthetic, and paramecium are not photosynthetic. And euglena, based off its response, is photosynthetic. Okay, that's why I had already crossed FD. I apologize for giving the answer away a little bit early. Okay, Judy wants to know what, what kind, sorry, that's a typo. We're just going to leave that there. Okay, I'm allowed a few. A pizza she should buy for her graduation party. So she invites 100 friends. You can see the data here, and it shows you what everybody would want. How would you graph it? Well, it's not really a comparison of things over time, so you're probably going to look, your best graph for comparison is dun, 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 a bar graph. And here she can clearly see the number of friends that like each type of pizza and maybe make a decision on what she wants to order. 